Hi, I'm Robert Padalano, and I hope you're enjoying Human Origins in action so far. We've already had some fantastic keynote speakers and virtual tours, and I'm sure over the next two days, we'll continue to hear from some amazing people and all about their exciting work. In this video, I'm going to take you on a short tour and inside look at some of our laboratories here at the Max Planck Institute for the Science of Human History. You'll see some of our state-of-the-art facilities that are helping us answer wide-ranging archaeological and paleoanthropological questions. We will look at some of our ongoing research in the instrumentation and protocols that allow us to be at the global forefront of archaeological sciences. This is Artifacts to Zooms, a virtual visit to the MPI SHH laboratories. Let's start the tour with a look at our instrumentation. We have eight multifunctional laboratory facilities for research in the archaeological sciences, with a strong focus on the identification of diagnostic biomolecules and bulk and compound specific isotope analysis. Our research examines the organic and inorganic components of a range of materials, including bone, teeth, dental calculus, ceramics, charred and uncharred plant remains, coprolites, residues, and sediments. Our laboratories possess state-of-the-art equipment and are already amongst the leading laboratories globally for biomolecular and environmental archaeology. In our stable isotope laboratory, we have a Conflow 4 thermoscientific isotope ratio mass spectrometer coupled to a Thermo Flash 2000 HT elemental analyzer for organic isotope analysis and a gas bench 2 connected to a thermoscientific Delta V IRMS for inorganic isotope analysis. We also have two Agilent gas chromatography mass spectrometers and two Elementar isoprime gas chromatography combustion isotope ratio mass specs. We are also equipped for the isotopic analysis of water, micromill sampling, and Fourier transfer infrared spectroscopy on a Bruker Vertex 70V FTIR spectrometer. Our Zooarchaeology Lab is one of the only dedicated Zooarchaeology Mass Spectrometer or ZOOMS facilities globally and houses a Bruker Autoflex Speed LRF Maldi Toff Mass Spectrometer as well as a fully established wet chemistry laboratory for extraction and purification of proteins for peptide mass fingerprinting analyses. The Microscopy and Paleobotany Laboratory has multiple microscopes for the investigation of macrobotanical remains, as well as phytolith and starch micro-remains. The Light Microscopy section consists of three high-powered Olympus microscopes fitted with digital cameras for direct imaging and measurements. A Kyant's VHX 6000 fully digital microscope for the analyses of small artifacts, as well as the surface of larger artifacts. The laboratories also include a Joel InTouch Scope JSM IT100LA Compact SEM with an attached energy dispersive X-ray spectrometer. In addition to GCMS and GCIRMS, the Biochemistry Lab has a Shimatsu LCMS 8050 liquid chromatography system with a triple quad mass spectrometer. There's also space for analyzing archaeological materials using traditional and emerging methods. The archaeology laboratory includes bench space for artifact analysis and photography, as well as 3D scanning and 3D morphometric analyses with an Artex Space Spider structured light scanner and a Next Engine 3D laser scanner. The Geoarchaeology Laboratory is equipped to carry out Fourier Transform Infrared Spectroscopy, Portable X-ray Fluorescence, in preparation work for micromorphology, particle size and cam sizer analyses, sediment pH, EC, and salinity, and magnetic susceptibility. And none of this would function without our incredible scientific staff and laboratory technicians. The work that we do and results that we produce are only possible because of the dedication and hard work of our technicians. People love to talk about being multidisciplinary, but really it is these individuals that are the experts in so many different techniques and protocols that allow us to be a global leader in archaeological sciences. Come with me into the Stable Isotope Lab now, which is actually made up of a few different lab spaces. These labs are overseen by Dr. Patrick Roberts and Dr. Jana Ilner, 
with much of the isotopic analyses being performed by Mary Lucas. These labs are fully equipped for wet chemistry and dry sample preparation, a drilling lab space for preparing bones, teeth, and shells for bulk stable carbon and oxygen isotope analysis, and a complete setup for the extraction of lipids for compound-specific isotope analysis. Our equipment allows us to specialize in organic and inorganic isotope analyses to answer archaeological questions concerning such things as paleo diet, paleoecology and environments, and paleoclimate. And we have studied samples from recent historical periods to those from over 10 million years ago. In the Stable Isotope Lab, we are committed to the development of programs for paleoenvironmental sampling of long-term terrestrial sequences directly on-site at archaeological locations. We utilize novel biogeochemical methods, including lipidomics and, specifically, plant wax biomarkers to provide detailed insight into vegetation, precipitation, and climatological history, as well as the relationships between environmental processes, cultural change, and human evolution. Stable Isotope Lab and its many members are involved in multiple transdisciplinary archaeological and paleoanthropological research projects around the world and have helped define what we know about human adaptability to tropical forests, diet and subsistence of both people and animals, as well as the ecological settings of human dispersals across and beyond Africa. Many of our PhD students are driving the innovation within the lab and have been instrumental in the development of protocols and techniques for bulk and sequential sampling, like that seen here of tooth enamel carbonate. Both the stable isotope and biochemistry groups are interested in compound specific isotope analyses. This includes biomarkers like plant wax normal alkanes, fecal sterols and stanols, and bile acid, amino acids, and fatty acids. We are fully capable of extracting these biomarkers from soils and sediments, as well as from the residues on pottery or even stone tools. Here, Aaron Scott is extracting plant waxes from archaeological sediments from Kenya. This involves the drying of the sediments, followed by weighing, and then placing the sediments into specialized cells for automated lipid extraction. We use a Buki pressurized speed extractor for the rapid removal of lipids from soils and sediments. This allows us to extract six samples at a time in about 90 minutes. These lipids are then subdivided into different fractions of organic compounds and then subjected to both gas chromatography mass spectrometry and isotope ratio mass spectrometry. We measure both carbon and hydrogen isotopes to study changes in past plant ecology and hydroclimate and the ways humans may have responded both morphologically and technologically to these changes in the past. There will be a few talks on these specific biomarkers over the next two days, so make sure to check out the Human Origins in Action agenda to learn more about how they are being applied in archaeological research. Whatever your interest in archaeology is, whether it's human evolution, the movement of people, or domestication of plants and animals, the Department of Archaeology's Stable Isotope Lab is focused on developing and applying the latest multidisciplinary methodologies in order to transform our understanding of the human past. So make sure to check out our projects and people's pages for more exciting research. Next is the Biochemistry Lab under the direction of Dr. Thomas Larson. This laboratory and its members specialize in several bio and geochemical analyses. This includes the study of lipid residues in archaeological pottery, secondary metabolites in dental calculus and archaeological artifacts, fecal biomarkers from both soil and lake records, and carbon and nitrogen stable isotopes of single amino acids from both ancient and modern contexts. Here, Dr. Yiming Wang is performing some liquid-liquid extractions and separations for her fecal biomarker research. Fecal biomarkers can help determine the presence of different taxa as well as their population sizes. And in her work, Dr. Wong uses them to evaluate both wild and domesticated animal demographics in response to hunting and animal domestication. 
The laboratory's analytical capabilities are made possible thanks to wet chemistry facilities and three newly purchased gas and liquid chromatographic instruments. Dr. Daniel Vasau is seen here working with the Shimatsu liquid chromatography system connected to a triple quad mass spectrometer, or better known as an LCMS. The LCMS is essential for obtaining high precision quantitative results, specifically when looking for such organic compounds as secondary metabolites or amino acids. So uh, with the HPLCMS and our typically reverse phase chromatography, we're able to look for relatively low natural products in extracts and residues. And we focus mostly here on targeted chemical analysis. So a lot of my time in the last few months has been dedicated to building libraries of biomarker standards uh, based on hypotheses of what types of materials are dealing with, and then looking for those biomarkers in our samples. So one of our major challenges is to build those hypotheses and then choose compounds that can serve as diagnostic and which then allow us to narrow the origin of the material we're analyzing down to a plant family or even a plant species or plant part. The polar compounds, they're often also more reactive, so they might undergo particular chemical reactions depending on the conditions under which the samples were preserved. So temperature, humidity, presence of oxygen, uh, all of these affect the stability of these compounds and in some cases that can also help us figure out what degradation products we might also try to detect uh, and then use them to identify the materials in our samples. Biochemistry also has an Agilent gas chromatography mass spectrometer for compound identification and quantification, as well as an Elementar isoprime vision gas chromatography isotope ratio mass spectrometer for measuring carbon and nitrogen isotopes of specific compounds. And with our GCMS techniques, on the other hand, uh, we focus on non-polar and more volatile compounds. And we can also perform non-targeted chemical analysis. That is, we get a broad fingerprint of what chemicals are present in our samples. And then the use of databases allows us in many cases to also determine their structures. Some of the same samples challenges for the polar compounds also apply here. Uh, non-polar compounds can also be pretty fine. And we can also try to figure out what the chemical of this degradation art to help trace things back to the plant of origin. Members of the biochemistry group are involved in some area-defining research. Some of the ongoing projects include the use of biomolecular fingerprints of ancient substances to trace transport of aromatics across ancient train networks such as the Silk Road, understanding shifts in human presence and environmental impacts through fecal steroid biomarkers, and looking at how climate change is having severe impacts on the diets and ecological adaptations of certain species living in the polar regions. Make sure to check out the Biochem People and Project pages for updates on their exciting work. Now we'll get an inside look at the Metabolites Lab, a cutting edge space used in identifying specialized organic compounds and their application to archaeological research. Plant secondary metabolites are small molecules with low molecular weight and are important markers for identifying plants used in the past when visible remains are absent. They play an important role in plant defense and have antibacterial, antifungal, antibiotic, and many other properties that protect plants from pathogens. Humans were well aware of these bioactive effects in the past and made use of specific plant products as medicines, aromatics, pigments, psychoactive drugs, and for food flavoring. In the Metabolites Lab, various extraction methods are employed to target volatile, hydrophobic, and polar compounds from ancient organic remains coming off of archaeological artifacts or in sediments. For example, Headspace solid phase micro extraction is the best method for extracting very volatile compounds, such as mono or sesquiterpenes. As most volatiles can disappear during more traditional solvent extractions and siliation processes, these non destructive solvent free methods are best for targeting metabolites.
After the extraction, target compounds are analyzed with either gas or liquid chromatography depending on sample polarity. This allows for the identification of the different compounds that are present in each sample, as observed in the chromatograms, and for determining the overall molecular composition of the metabolites. Based on this molecular composition, it is then possible to identify the original plant or different plant parts that were combined in the past to create such things as perfumes or medicinal remedies. Now, these metabolites are being used to study cultural exchange networks in the ancient world along the Silk Road and the Incense Road connecting Eastern Africa, Arabia, and Western Asia. Until now, most of our knowledge of ancient trade commodities in these regions were from written sources. But with metabolites, we are able to obtain more tangible evidence from the archaeological record. Make sure to follow along metabolite research for some upcoming fascinating discoveries coming out of our department. Let's now take a brief look inside the Zooms lab. Our Zooms, or Zooarchaeological Mass Spectrometry Laboratory is one of the only dedicated Zooms facilities globally, and it is designed for the biomolecular identification of osteological remains. The laboratory contains equipment for the extraction and amplification of modern reference DNA, enabling improved ability to identify the sequences of new Zooms markers. It is also home to the Finder Project, or the Fossil Fingerprinting and Identification of New Denisovan Remains from Pleistocene Asia. The Zooms methodology is specifically designed for the characterization of unidentifiable bones. Each bone fragment is subsampled and immersed in acid and base to extract collagen. This is cleaved with trypsin to create individual peptide sequences which are then spotted on a target plate and measured in the MALDI-TOF MS. The analytical advantages of MALDI-TOF include its speed, application flexibility, and sensitivity, and it is economical in terms of both labor and costs involved. The convenience and effectiveness of the MALDI is magnified by virtue of its low sample volume requirements and broad sample content amenability. Collagen is the dominant and often best preserved protein in tissues such as bone, dentine, and antler. From a few milligrams of powder, collagen type 1 is extracted and digested to peptides, and the peptides are analyzed using the maldi toff to produce a collagen peptide mass fingerprint. This fingerprint is unique for deeply diverged taxonomic groups, and observed spectrometric patterns can be matched against a reference database consisting of a known peptide fingerprint. And this technique has already been instrumental in our understanding of human origins. In the Finder project, collagen is used for peptide mass fingerprinting as a first step identification of bones belonging to humans and our extinct ancestors. Once bone fragments are identified as being potentially human using the collagen fingerprinting approach, they are then subjected to ancient DNA analyses for species identification, such as what was done for Denisovans. My name is Annette Ertley and I am a postdoctoral research technician on the ERC Finder project with Katerina Duca. I completed my PhD at the University of Sydney in Australia in 2019 and have a background in zoo archaeology with a keen interest in the foodways, people in coastal and island landscapes. I started working at MPI in early 2020 to undertake zoom sampling and analyses on archaeological bone from Eurasia. Zooms stands for Zoo Archaeology by Mass Spectrometry. My background in archaeological science covers a range of methods and techniques to analyze and identify faunal material. I've taken this further with my current position and use peptide mass fingerprinting to identify highly fragmented bone in the hopes of finding human remains. I use a number of Zooms protocols to extract collagen from archaeological bones. There are a number of different protocols that can be used 
depending on the age and preservation of the remains we are working with, uh, as well as if non-destructive analysis is necessary. For example, for the poorly preserved bone from Papua New Guinea, that's a protocol so we used to demineralize the bone. Samples were then gelatinized and digested. Once the proteins have been cut into peptides using trypsin, the extract is filtered and then spotted on a plate and run through a Maldi-Toff mass spectrometer. The data is then analyzed and compared to our reference database to identify the peaks that match with no taxa. Through this method, we can identify highly fragmented bone that was previously unidentifiable. For the Finder project, we are hoping to identify new human remains from Pleistocene Eurasia that may tell us more about our Denisovan ancestors. Zooms really is changing the way we do archaeological and paleoanthropological research, so stay tuned for some amazing discoveries coming soon. Unfortunately, we didn't have a chance to get inside every lab today, and I would have loved to have taken you into the paleobotany and proteomics labs. But remember, you can always check out our department website for more information on the labs themselves, the data we are producing, and the people making it all happen. I know it's late and it's been a long day one, but I want to say thank you for joining me on this tour of the laboratories at the Max Planck Institute for the Science of Human History. If you have any questions or would like to talk about any of our equipment or protocols, please feel free to contact me. So thank you and enjoy the rest of the workshop.